as always. <laughs> You're a moron. <laughs> they hooked you up. Is there supposed to be text here? Choose one. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I am a puppet. Yeah. Thirty thirty second memory. <laughs> See, this actually, uh, uh, let's take yes. Pretty simple. <laughs> the world ends. <laughs> I don't know why there's no text on half of these. It just doesn't. Oh, 
coming. Research, science, technology. <laughs> looks like like any other American hotel it doesn't even look like an apartment that's it's like you know welcome to the Radisson <laughs> I do not need to know about the company I work for in order to successfully preform my job never mind performance it's preformance it's what you do before you do it that counts all right oh, this is a tough one now from what I've learned from test taking if you don't know, you choose C, because it's almost always C. So we'll go for C. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, sure, I'll give your voice a break. It is... It is your second week as an ethical administrator intern with GP Limited. You have furnished your apartment with a small bed and a chair. Never mind all the other stuff you saw in the previous week. You got rid of that. You don't need that crap. You don't need material goods. You don't even really need that chair. You just keep it because... <laughs> we had the bed, we had a painting, we had curtains, there was a, a, a stand, and there was, I think, a mirror. <laughs> so we got rid of all that crap. We even pulled up the carpeting. Fuck that. <laughs> Your fellow colleagues notice you when you walk past them. You're the man. They don't go out for drinks because you smell funny. Because all you have is a bed and a chair and no shower or sink. <laughs> you return to your office to see another questionnaire. Number one. Choose a number. Ooh, this is a tough one. Five? Okay. You wonder for a moment what the numbers could mean. Then you choose one. Actually, I chose one and then I started to wonder. Each day of your second week follows this pattern. Still no one to report to, you leave and spend the remaining hours of each day sleeping. That's all you do. You work, you sleep. No potty time, nothing else. No sex whatsoever. You don't even get to watch porn because all you have is a bed and a chair, and that chair is starting to look pretty sexy. Four legs. Three holes, plenty of possibilities. <laughs> it's that old, old world fashion with the, like the round bottoms to the feet of it and stuff. And we'll, we'll stop here. Lady's gonna kill us. <laughs> oh, yeah. You realize that because of this, you can no longer sleep at night. So you spend the night playing with duct tape. You've lost all your body hair. You think that you would like to know about the numbers, but you don't say anything because you don't work with anybody. You don't see anybody. You start talking to the walls. On Friday night, you write yourself a questionnaire. Number one, I do not want to know what these numbers mean. Choose one. Yes, yes, or yeah. Voice choose C. Ooh. The way they prompt that's weird. And there's like a D. Well, it was weird because when I when I clicked on, <sighs> that's the weird thing. When I clicked on C, D appeared. So it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's just kind of, it's like an Easter egg. We got a lamp. It's like you're not real. Hmm. Yeah, the five. Stick with it.
I just circled it. That doesn't make any sense. And you get paid really well. I think we're having them executed with a flaming pie. They, they light a, a cream pie. And looking at the lamp that you bought. Yeah, your first time you click, uh, the last one shows up. So I tried picking the last one. Why not? If you have looked up the meaning of Javier Porcellus, you are thinking much too hard about this. It is your fourth week as an ethical administrator intern with GP Limited. Ah, eh, whatever. <laughs> it's all a game. You have furnished your apartment with a small bed, a chair, a lamp, and the hum of air conditioning. <laughs> you didn't notice that sound before. If you've gone to look up the meaning of HVAC, don't worry, you're a normal human being. I actually know what it means. <laughs> yes. Essentially, it's uh, heating and uh, cooling. HVAC is if you have forced air uh, furnace that blows like hot air in the winter, cold air in the summer, or just air in general. Um, though you won't admit to it, you are too nervous to notice how your colleagues receive you. You're sweating profusely and you smell like feet. You return to your office and see a magical pony squatting in the corner, making frozen yogurt. <laughs> Piece of paper. And a pen! Seriously, what were you expecting? Also, there's a questionnaire. Number one! Choose one. E! You circle the only option and leave. Each day of your fourth week follows this pattern. You spend the remaining hours of each day listening to the air conditioner. It is whispering cool and soothing thoughts to you. On Thursday night, you take it out to dinner, dancing. Lowenstein? What? <laughs> oh, okay. On Thursday night, you sit in your apartment doing nothing, and we felt the need to tell you this because it was significant. <laughs> yeah, exactly. On Friday, before leaving your apartment, you hear a knock at the door. Do you open it? Is there a save? Uh, I guess that's it. Uh, I have a turn. Uh, no. <laughs> you decide. Oh, uh, we had to see. You decide not to open the door. That's why we saved. Nothing happens. Ha! Ah! See? We're still alive. It pays to be antisocial. Says you. I'm okay with that. <laughs> For the people.
shit if I know. I thought I was choosing numbers at McDonald's. Big Mac meal. <laughs> Authorizing. That's fine. The true ending. Okay. I don't think it went that far. Though it, it said it said you ended your internship, but if you're an intern, you're not actually an employee, which means you're not you may not even be on the books. There might not be any red tape or paper saying that you were there, you know, so it gives you the uh, okay. So let's jump back to where we had the only decision, and now we'll do what you wanted to do. I just wanted to be antisocial and have sex with my chair, and you want me to answer the door? Well, you, we're answering the door with the chair up our butt. It's, it's, it, well, the chair does have four legs, so we'll walk up and answer the door with the chair sticking out of our butt and offer them one of the other legs. They've got their choice. There's three more legs. Let's see what they say. Imagine the chair dragging behind us now. <laughs> so wrong. It's making me a little crazy. I blame the game. <laughs> Well, hello. Uh-oh. We have been visited by the great dot, dot, dot. <laughs> and the chair in your butt. <laughs> she likes it. You are useless. Life is good. That's it. That is all of Javier Porcellus. Now, wh what you don't realize is that this game is actually about the uh, experimentation and use of porcini mushrooms in food. You've been choosing who gets to try the pizza with the mushrooms. And unfortunately, uh, most of the people on the list that you could choose from are actually horrifically uh, allergic to it. So you've been doing human experimentation on allergies as well. It ends up spawning the mushroom people, and if anybody has played The Last of Us, yeah, that's the sequel to this. This is like a hidden prequel nobody knew about, and Lay is awesome. Ah. Now, I'm... Uh, serious thoughts about it. If they have anything else added with the chair, I will find that amazingly humorous. But yeah, it doesn't fit the tone at all. Um, I don't know. Uh, personally, I think it might be good to have a little bit more interaction with uh, either other characters or co-workers. Kind of build a little bit more of the world. Because you can actually make it feel a bit more skewed or off. If other employees have a little bit of like tension or confusion or 
or they they seem a little lost or paranoid as well. You know, you want to you want to layer the paranoia as much as possible. So. for these consequences or anything like that which There was A, B, C, D, and then a few times when you clicked on something, an E option would pop up. And one time I did click on that one. I don't know if it made any difference. That's that's the big thing is like choosing between the different entries for the entire thing. It never actually felt like it acknowledged that I chose something specific. I, it, it never said I had clicked on anything at all. It just kept going. So those choices may not have actually been choices. It might have just been a screen prompt. And when I clicked, it goes to the next screen no matter what you pick. Yeah. I... I... Yeah. I think, I, I think, well, yeah, but it's also kind of, it, it's it's also something of a job, so there has to be some purpose. I think one thing that could help is if you are actually making decisions, and it is actually recording A, B, C, D, uh, whatever your choices are, it would be cool if there was actually a, a portion of the story, like every week, where you, you were given compensation based on those choices, and it's like in negative proportional depending on like what you pick and who you pick, you get paid more or paid less. And that in itself means like the more you get paid, potentially the more abuse or, or, or damage you're doing. There has to be a motivating factor. It's like you're taking an internship. You're not being trained. You're not being paid. You're just being given. Well, it says you're being paid, but it doesn't really say how much. And you're being given an apartment. And that's it. You're really not given much to go by. If like, if this is even worth it, most people would question it sooner. It doesn't give you the option to back out. If you do start to question it, you just kind of have to go with the system. So I think more options, more um, interaction, or at least some type of feedback as you progress would be better. I also think uh, with the different visuals, uh, even if it's subtle, to help add to that sort of unnerving strangeness, Having things change just a little bit, I know they did slowly add like what was actually in your room in terms of items. <clears throat> yeah, but it was very, yeah, very very vague too. It would be cool if visually little things changed, like if you actually changed up stuff in the room, but never actually called attention to it. Yeah. Um, uh, little things like that to kind of throw you off so if somebody's really paying attention they'll be like wait a minute wasn't that lamp in the other corner last time why is it over here now why is my bed a different color why is the one window closed and the other one open you know little things or even in the office having a few little things change but not drawing attention to it just having it change so that it makes the player wonder why are things going weird is this the same office yeah well, yeah you gotta establish a reason. 
And then, uh, yeah. And then, and then finally, where is this hamster's other eyeball? Damn it! <laughs> ah, all right. So actually, that's the whole thing. We are manipulating hamsters genetically by choosing the different things. Because now, see, this hamster. It, it, it really doesn't have proper uh, ears. It just has like burned lumps on its head. So maybe it had horns and that they cut them off. It's missing an eye. It only really has one foot. The other ones are like have burned off stumps. So we've been choosing the abuse of this poor hamster. Now I feel really guilty. <laughs> See, I actually have an emotional response now. Like, my God, I have been ruining this hamster's life and it's looking at me with its last eye, begging either to be killed or saved. <laughs> it's like, Put me out of my misery. <laughs> that, that, all right, we fig I figured it out. That's the whole point. And now I feel really horrible and I never want to play this again because uh, the guilt is killing me. <laughs> You're sick. You are so sick. How could you? Look at that cute hamster. I think there is only the two endings. At least that's what we were told before this. So I don't know how we get anything else. But there's our deep philosophical discussion about life, work, and hamsters. Hopefully you guys got a kick out of that or didn't get too bored. What was that? <laughs> and we will end with the hamster dance. Okay, not really. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, comment if you actually have managed to get this far into the video without smashing your face into the monitor. And uh, thank you for watching. We will sign off now, and uh, happy days. <laughs>